Good morning, NTC preschoolers. How are you today? I am so excited that you joined us for Thankful Tree, where we are learning that God is good. Let's check our mailbox. Oh, Ollie's got a couple things. Thanks, Ollie. Our memory verse. Oh, whoa, here's a little message. <gasps> Today's Bible story is I can thank God for food. <gasps> Who is good? That's right, God is good. And here is our memory verse we're going to work on. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Psalms 107.1. Let's do that again. So when I say give thanks, we clap. Give thanks, for he is good. No, 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 Miss Heather messed it up. Ready? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Okay. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Psalms 107.1. So it's give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Psalms 107.1. You be practicing that and send me some videos. Let's stand up and worship together. I just want to thank God for the way he made me. Everywhere I look, I see how much he loves me. I am so excited. I am so and I just can't hide it And I just can't hide it Yes, I love him too Oh, oh, oh Yes, I love him too It's true, God's love is special Making bread. Well, actually. 
actually right now I'm kneading the bread. You fold and push, fold and push. It's so much fun. But there was a lot to do before I got to the kneading part. First, I had to mix the flour and salt in the oil. Then I poured in the yeast. You have to be careful with it and pour it in slowly. Then I mixed it into the flour. Finally, I got to knead. The kneading really is the best part of making bread. You fold and push, fold and push. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Kai. Who? Who? Making some bread today, are you? Hi, Ollie. I sure am. Kneading the bread is my favorite part. It's awesome. Making bread is fun. It's true. I know of someone who made bread just like you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. Okay, go fetch Stormy Jane. <laughs> Oh, hi friends, I'm Carrie, and today I'm playing fetch with my best dog, Stormy Jane. Whoa, Stormy Jane, hold on, silly dog. Wait, where's the toy? Oh, you brought me your bowl. She seems upset. What do you guys think Stormy Jane wants? Oh, food, I bet you're right. Are you hungry, Stormy Jane? I will take that as a yes. Have you guys ever been hungry? Like really hungry? Like so hungry that your tummy is making that rumbling noise? You have? Well, Stormy has for sure. Which reminds me of a story about a guy who was really hungry. Let me get Stormy some food and I'll tell it to you. This true story from the Bible begins with a man named Elijah who one day got very, very hungry. But there was no food or water anywhere. God told Elijah to go to a woman that God had chosen and she would give him food. So Elijah went off to find her. Tell me if you see the woman. A goat? No, that's not her. There's a man, but that's not who we're looking for. You see her? You're right, there she is. That's the woman God said to ask. So Elijah went up to her and said, can I have a drink of water please? And a piece of bread? I'm very hungry. I'm so sorry, she said. I don't have any bread. I only have a little oil and a little flour. I'm picking up sticks so I can make one more meal for me and my son. Then we won't have any food left. But Elijah told the woman, don't be afraid. God will help you. So the woman went home and she used the last of her flour and oil to make bread for Elijah. There goes the oil. And there goes the flour. Now she's got to pat the dough. Can everyone help? Let's pat it. Pat, pat, pat. Now let's knead it. Knead, knead, knead. Good job, little bakers. You can stop. The bread is ready. The woman gave it to Elijah who was super hungry. Thank you, Elijah said. But what about the woman and her son? They needed bread too. All her flour and oil were gone. But remember, Elijah had told her that God would help her. Look, on the table, there's more oil and there's more flour. Elijah told her that God said she would not run out of flour or oil, and they didn't. From that day on, Elijah, the woman, and her son all had food to eat. They were very thankful for the food God gave them. God is good. Oh, hi, Ollie. Ollie, tell me. Who is good? God is good. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who is good? God is good. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story. It's all true. God helped the woman and her family. God is good. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, the woman made 
bread for Elijah, and then God made sure she would have more flour and oil to make more bread. God is good. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I know Elijah was thankful for that bread. I'm thankful for bread too. I should write that down and put it on our thankful tree. I'm thankful for bread and apples and bananas and pizza and I have so many leaf sad. See you guys next time. Goodbye. It's time to pray. I can stand, I can sit, I can lay, but I can't play. It's time to pray. Welcome to a small group. If you have Play-Doh or bread dough, go get some, maybe some biscuits or something. Maybe you can do this later. Have you ever helped bake bread before? When you make bread, you have to press it and fold it and press it and fold it and shape the dough. So we're gonna press, my mom used to call it kneading the dough. So the Play-Doh is a little bit little, so you can see. So we have to mold it and shape it and press it to make dough. Just like in our Bible story today, where we learned about how God kept pr provided food and that we can thank God for food. Hmm, maybe I'm gonna make mine into rolls. So if I made mine into rolls and I don't have, I don't have a knife to cut them off, but look at the, I can make rolls and we can bake those rolls right up. It's a lot of work to shape and make dough. And in today's Bible story, we heard about a lady who made that for, for her friend and then Elisha, and then God promised to keep her flour and oil forever. So we thank God for our food and he always provides. So who is good? That's right, God is good. I can't wait to work more on being thankful next week. See you here.
Rich, how is everybody doing today? We're talking about gratitude and I thought of something. Gratitude is the best attitude. So gratitude is letting others know you see how they helped you. So it's a posture of how we feel, but then it's letting others know with a thank you. Thanks mom for making my breakfast. Thanks dad for picking me up from practice. You know, just being thankful and having a good attitude. So we're gonna talk about celebrating today. So different celebrations and celebrating the things God has done. What do we do? We celebrate holidays. That's right. I'm gonna draw something and you guess what holiday I'm talking about. Okay? Are you ready? Did you say Valentine's Day? If you did, clap your hands. Good for you. How about, um, how about this one? Let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, I guess I would have an end. I have to make, yes, as the stars, I need white. What is it? Did you say 4th of July? You're right. I'm not a very good flag drawer. Give me a break. Give me a break. All right, here's another one. Yes, you're all yelling it. I can hear it already. Not a very good Christmas, that's right. How about this one? I'm gonna use blue for it. Um, Just in case you're not sure, that's your birthday cake and your present. Okay. Um, one more. What do we do on this day? We celebrate something. It has to do with the cross. And an empty tomb. Easter, you're right. Good job. All right. Oh, I wish I had a different color marker, but um, how am I going to draw this one? All right. This holiday is coming up, and I'm really excited to celebrate because I really like to. Okay, I'll keep. I'll draw it. Um. Oh, um. I, that doesn't look like it, but. Hmm, here's, here's a table, and there's, oh, I shouldn't have told you that. And maybe here. I wish I had, you know what that is? I think you do. Did somebody say Thanksgiving? You're right, that's a turkey. Okay, so Miss Heather can't sing and she can't draw, but we can celebrate. I'm good at celebrating. So stand up. Let's celebrate who Jesus is and worship together. All right. See you soon. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Go verse 
too. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, 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 oh. I just wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I wanna say thank you. someone know how grateful you are, you could give someone a shout out with your hands. <laughs> Woo! You're awesome! You can send an all caps text message. You are awesome! You can use the ancient art of flag semaphore. Go! You! But my favorite way to show gratitude is through song. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. That was pretty cool, right? <laughs> let me let me let me see that back. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. Because you make me. Is that what? I, is that what I look like? How embarrassing! Never showing gratitude again. Again. We'll hear about a time when King David showed gratitude in a really big way. And he wasn't even a little bit embarrassed. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. After many years of war and uncertainty, David had finally become the king of Israel. But something was still missing from the royal city of Jerusalem. The Ark of the Lord belongs here. 
The Ark was a wooden chest that in some special way carried the presence of God among the Israelites. It had been stolen by the Philistines and then returned, and now it was sitting in the home of a man named Obed-Edom. We'll set up a tent right here for the Ark. Let's go get it. David's wife, Michal, was, um, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. The dust on those back roads takes the curl out of my hair. So David gathered up all his best soldiers and marched over to the place where the Ark rested. This is a wonderful day, an incredible day, an absolutely fantastic day. With great care, the men lifted the heavy ark with carrying poles. Wonderful, excellent, let's go. That's one step closer to Jerusalem. Two, three. Are you seriously gonna count the whole way? Wait, stop. We've only come six steps. That's okay. We need to thank God for everything he's done. Right then and there, David sacrificed a bull and a calf to honor God. Okay, now we can move on. One, two, three, lift. Just walking isn't enough. We should dance for God. The ark's kind of heavy. Everyone else, if you're not carrying the ark, celebrate, sing, shout, blow the trumpets. The people shouted and ran alongside the ark. David danced before the Lord all the way to Jerusalem. As the laughing, shouting parade arrived, Michelle stared in disbelief from a window. There was her husband, the king, dancing in a simple linen garment with all the common people. Unbelievable. He looks ridiculous. Certainly not like a king. Down on the street, David continued to dance all the way to the beautiful tent he had set up. Everybody behind me, let's dance. Okay, keep on moving. Now, let's switch it up. Time for a breather. Let's put the ark right here. One, two, three, down. David made more sacrifices to honor God. Then he stood before the people. The ark has returned. God bless you. He is the one who rules over us all. He deserves our thanks for everything he's done. So let's keep celebrating. We've got some fresh bread and dates and raisin cakes for everyone. Though all of Jerusalem had turned out for the festivities, one person still refused to celebrate. When David returned home, Michal met him furious. You're the king of Israel, and you've really made yourself look good today, right? Dancing around in that thing? A linen apron. It's what the priests wear. But you're a king. You made a fool of yourself in front of all of your officials and even the servants. I did it to honor God. He made me ruler over his people. I can't even. I will celebrate to honor the Lord. You already said that. Oh, I'm not done. I will bring even less honor to myself if it will bring more honor to God. What is that in your beard? Raisins. <laughs> you want to do the electric slide? No. While Michelle cared more about appearances than anything else, David fixed his gaze on God because he knew nothing was more important than celebrating to thank God for all the amazing things he'd done. King David wasn't embarrassed to show how grateful he was to God, and it didn't matter who saw, because David knew that honoring God was more important than honoring himself. So he danced! And maybe he sang, You make me feel like dying, thank you for being you. You make me feel God had done so much for David, so thanking God must have felt like a party! And maybe he sang, I'm not embarrassed. You know why? Because God made the universe. God made you and me. And God made it possible for us to have a relationship with him when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. We should be celebrating with our hands. Woo! With semaphore flags. You are amazing. You are incredible. With singing and dancing and praying, shouting it from the rooftops. We should be celebrating God any way we know how, because that's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate what God has done. And if someone asks you why you're celebrating, tell them. 
Sometimes, telling people about God is the best way to show him you're grateful. You make me feel like that, yeah. I'm a thank you for being you. You make me feel like that, yeah. It's really, really true. small group you can just grab a piece of paper and maybe some markers and crayons this is our big shout out uh, just like our verse let them know you're thankful so today we're gonna give a shout out and draw something on how we what we would do to celebrate the goodness that God has done so some way in which we can celebrate God so beyond church and worship I'm going to again we know how good Miss Heather is at drawing. Not. So, oh, I don't know what that is, but we're just going to pretend that's a chair back. That one went way out crazy. So, this one's me. Okay. Oh, this could be more. Okay. This is me, let's say, and this is me going to visit somebody that's shut in and that's not able to get out. So we can celebrate God's goodness by giving to others, sharing our abilities. Um, I could help this person clean their house. I could do whatever they needed, just visiting them and giving them company and my love and support. You know, you guys will probably have a ton of creative ideas to in ways in which you can celebrate what God has done. Um, we celebrate on special days like Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. We celebrate specific things that Jesus has done. Um, and another thing we do together as a church is we celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper, when we take the bread and the cup and we remember what God has done for us and how uh, with him sending his son Jesus. There are so many ways we can celebrate. Today, David danced. Um, but we can do it anytime. It doesn't have to be a special holiday or a special way. So make every day a celebration. You guys, I know, have great creative ways, but how we are in what we do celebrates what God has done, who you are and the way he made you. If you are made to help people, if you have a beautiful voice to sing or you're good at drawing and you can give out gifts, that is how we can celebrate God's goodness. You have a great week and I'll see you back here soon. So happy you joined me today. Can't wait to get to the so-and-so show, find out what our uh, bottom line question is. But today we're talking about celebrating God's goodness. So, and how we can do that. There are so many things we can celebrate God's goodness. And some of those we can thank God for his power, his love, his goodness, his holiness, for the way he cares for us and for sending his son, Jesus. Those are just a few ways. Let's go check out our Bible story and I'll meet you back at Small Group. Hey, what you doing? Reading. Ah, oh, wasn't sure.
<laughs> I forgot. What? It's break dancing. Oh. Hello, everybody out there in the worldwide world. World, yeah. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and you're watching the, the So and So Show, a show where we bring you chills, thrills, Ooh. and spills. Why didn't you do that? You said spills. No, I meant like. Like spills, like, you know, falling down. Oh, okay, I got it. Spills. Like, okay, oh, right. I'll just, uh, yeah. Oh. Are you going to clean that up? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Anyway, we also hope we can bring you some truth about God and, and show you some ways we can honor him by how we live. That's amidst all the fun and hijinks. <laughs> hijinks. That is a great word. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, all clean. <laughs> Awesome. What's the plan for today? So glad you asked, Brandon. Mm. Today, I have invited someone on the show to talk about something I know you love. Ooh, crosswords? No. Alphabetizing? No. Sitting quietly alone? No, silly. Dancing! Oh, wow. I strongly dislike dancing. Then please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> Get it. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who are you, you and uh, what do you know? My name is Parker, and I'm a professional breakdancer. How did you learn to do that? I had an amazing teacher. She taught me all the moves and helped me fall in love with the art of it, you know? Now I can't quit. Oh, oh. I wish I could do that. You can, man. Oh. Everybody's got a little dancing in them. All you gotta do is let it out. Well, can you teach us? I can try. Whoa! Hey! That's awesome! You ready to dance? You want me to break dance? Yes! Aren't you excited? Yeah! <laughs> all right, let's do it. First thing, we gotta work on your wardrobe. You got anything a little looser? Oh. Will, Will this, this work? work? That'll work. Ha <laughs> All right, let me show you some steps. Okay. Come on. All right, cool, cool, cool. Sure. Okay, so today I'm gonna be teaching you guys top rock. Oh, all right? Top so rock. first, okay. you wanna have your feet shoulder width apart, mm -hmm. knees slightly bent, okay. and arms crossed in front. Very nice. Okay, now you wanna take your right foot and step in front of your left and open your arms at the same time. Almost like you're saying what's up to somebody. Like a friend. Okay. Right? okay. Cool, cool. And step. What's up? Very awesome. nice. Awesome. Very nice. Now you're going to come back to center. Cross your arms. Yeah. And now you're going to repeat on the other side. Okay. okay. And remember to open your arms like, what's, what's up? up? Very oh, nice. nice, guys. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> now come back to center. And that's top rock. So we're going to go left. I mean, right. Yeah. Center, yeah. left foot, center. Yeah. Right foot, center, Yeah. Okay. left foot, center. Like this? That's it, you're getting it, yeah. Okay, this Easy is hard. enough, this right? Is really hard. Keep working, Okay. you'll get there. Okay, so now let's try that step to some music. Oh, awesome, oh, awesome. Oh boy. Who's, who's, who, you, who do you wanna go? John, Me, you go oh, first. Okay, okay come cool. On, come on, come on. Okay. Awesome. Oh. All right, you ready? Yeah. And Hit it. Nice. Ooh, nice, John. Hey, man. 
Nice, John, I bad for your first time. Oh, thank you, thank you. Brandon, what about you? Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. Come on, man, you got it, come on. Show us, you got it. Okay, okay. <sighs> do the thing. I mean, hit it. Let's do it. Yeah. Am I doing it? Is this it? Nice. You, um, you really think so? You're a natural. You really think so? How'd you do that? I don't know. I just, I, I, I just let the music move me, right? It was awesome. Oh. No, 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 seriously. How did you do that? So uh, thanks for coming on the show today, Parker. We should do it again someday. No doubt. Maybe next time you guys could teach me something. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Catch you later, guys. All right. Bye. <laughs> wow, that was really a lot of fun. How did you do that? It's Bible story time with Cameron. Hey, fellas. Oh, our friend Kellen is taking a break, so Cameron is filling in for him this month. How's it going, Cameron? Can't complain. What's up with you guys? We were just break dancing. How did you do? What story you got for us today, Cameron? Well, it's funny that you were dancing because today's story has some dancing in it too. You see, King David. Ta da! I like to think about the dancing. Horvath. Horvath, that's my name. <laughs> did you want to help tell the story today? Let's do this. All right. Just in case you haven't met Horvath. That's my name. Right. This is how this works. I'll tell the Bible story, and whenever Horvath feels inspired, he'll jump in with an exercise that'll help us remember what the story's about. That's right! Yeah, I combine the mental trainings of learning the Bibles with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. All right, let's do this! Here we go. David was the king of Israel, and he wanted to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. The arks! Okay, first exercise, I call this watch out for the floodings. We will do swimming motions for 38 hours, like this. Wait, 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 Horvath. Uh, that's not the ark I'm talking about. Noah's ark? No, that was a big boat. The ark I'm talking about was a special box that contained the original Ten Commandments. Some say it even had the actual presence of God. This ark was also called the Ark of Covenant, or the Ark of the Lord. So. No swimmies? No, no swimmies. <laughs> All right, let's do this. The Ark of the Lord had been stolen and had been away from Jerusalem for a long time. So King David and 30,000 of his best soldiers left Jerusalem to go and get the Ark. All right, first exercise. I call this exercise marching to the Ark really, really fast. We will march as fast as we can doing high knees like this. Do them with me. Do them with me, and we will do this until we get okay. all the way to the ark. Ah, go! Ah. Uh, I'll just... <laughs> so, King David and his soldiers went to where the ark of the Lord was being kept, the house of a man named Obed-Edom. Ah! Ah, ah, ah. Thanks! How did you beat me here? <gasps> <laughs> you okay, Horvath? You need to take a minute. I keep telling the stories. Oh, sure. When they found the ark, they put it on a cart and set out for Jerusalem. After only six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fat calf as a way to honor God. Second exercises. I call this one six step calf squat. First you squat like this. Then you take six steps in place while squatting. One, six. Then you leap in the air with your arms meshed together like an axe and swing them down to a squat when you land like this. <sighs> we will do this 473 times. Oh, man. Go. One, one six, six, one, <laughs> eight feet, two, uh, 
Uh, mailbox. Candy. 473. All right. What happened next, Cameron? Well, King David returned the Ark of the Lord to Jerusalem as planned. And he was so excited, he didn't even care that he wasn't dressed like a king when he got there. He danced with all his might before God and everyone wearing only some priestly undergarments. Oh, third exercise. I call this David dance party. Are you going to dance? I get embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> well, when David's wife, McCall, saw him dancing like that in front of everyone, she was really unhappy. She didn't think a king was supposed to act that way in public. Oh, fourth exercise! I call this one miserly McCall trunk rotation. So you stand tall with your noses in the air like this. Then you fold your arms tightly like this. Then you rotate your trunk like this. We will do this five and a half times. A half? Go! One. The breeze. Half. What's next? After the celebration, McCall told King David that he had made a fool of himself in front of everyone. Because of dancing? Yup. But, but he was only dancing because he was excited about the boats returning to the cities. Uh, <laughs> the Ark of the Lord was not a boat. No swimming. But you're right. David was dancing because he wanted to celebrate what God had done. He told McCall that it didn't matter who saw him do it. Honoring God was more important than honoring himself. Oh, oh, I understand. So even if dancing embarrasses me, I should do it if it honors God? I mean, you don't have to dance. No, no! I will dance this to celebrate God. David dance party part two. Here it goes. Five, six, three, 29. <laughs> Way to go. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait, tell the story really fast one more time. Oh, okay. Uh, go. David went to go get the ark. Marching to the arks. <laughs> they put the ark on a cart and took six steps. <laughs> oh, oh, six step calf squat. Go. One, 28. Ooh. When they got to Jerusalem, David danced before God. David danced party. But McCall was disappointed. Miserly Michael, trunk rotation. So David said celebrating God was more important than how he looked. David Day's body part two. <laughs> Excellent, Horvath. Ah! Oh. Oh. oh, okay. Look. Okay. Ah! Horvath's gonna just keep dancing. Ah! The end, fellas. Wow, I love that story. David wasn't scared to show everyone how grateful he was to God. Yeah, he just went for it. Yup, there are tons of different ways to celebrate what God has done for us. We don't have to dress a certain way or act like everyone else. We can be loud, we can be quiet, we can stand out from the crowd. <laughs> we can do whatever he's doing. That's great, Cameron. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. No problem. Um, okay. See ya. <laughs> I've got a question. Okay, then reveal. No, 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 no. How do you know how to break dance? Everybody's got a little dancing in them, John. You just gotta let it come out. No, really. Reveal the question. Oh, hey, what are creative ways to show gratitude? You can dance. Oh. Uh, you can give someone a gift. You can tell someone how you learned to break dance. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to show God and others how grateful you are. So talk about it with someone. And we'll see you next time on the- Teach me! The So-and-So Show. Teach me. Yeah. Well, Boogaloo, you have to kind of stand this way straight and you shake. Just like shake really fast. You shake oh. so fast until you, until you vanish in thin air. Yeah. Am I gone? Uh, Am I gone? Keep trying. No, keep okay. trying, Parker. All right. Uh, Shake as fast as you can. It's the electric boogaloo. Uh, Am I gone? No. How you doing, Parker? No, that's right. Huh? That's, I'm doing it right? That's the way you do it. That's what it's all about. <laughs> hey, good morning, Bridge Kids. We're going to open our Bibles together today and talk about a verse. 
and go over it. And we're not just going to do that. We're going to compare it to the way David, what David did and how his wife, Michael, reacted to it too. So here we go. Psalms, which is in the, directly in the middle of the Bible, Psalms 9.1 says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. Now, if we are going to take this verse and we're going to grade David on it, um, how, for how closely he lived out the kind of gratitude expressed this way, what grade would you give him and why? Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't even barely let him get like two feet and then he would make him dance or praise God when he was doing what he was doing, didn't he? He was over the top full of gratitude for all that God had done. Now, well, how would you grade his wife? Yeah, not as high, huh? She kind of had a bad attitude about it all. So we can look at others and kind of grade their levels of gratitude, but let's step back today. What grade would you give yourself and why? Do you ever complain about the size of your bedroom? Do you ever complain about what you don't have? I do sometimes. And then we have to step back and we have to figure out how to improve those goals of gratitude. Now, one of the things people talk about is having a gratitude journal and just, you know, give me 10 things right now. I, you know what? My attitude feels like grumpy and ugly right now. How am I going to have gratitude? Tell me five things right now. List them right now. What you are, ha you are grateful for. I am grateful for my church. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm very thankful for my job. And I'm thankful that I get to be with you this Sunday morning. Man, just thinking about you and I being together and when we're talking about God makes me so thankful that there's such thing as technology that we can do this. So whether you're on YouTube or Facebook Live, whatever, I'm just glad we can be together. Even though it's kind of stinky, I don't get to see everybody. But I can still have gratitude that we have an avenue to do that. So there's a lot of reasons why we might not be super grateful. Maybe we can't hang out with our friends or get, go to school or do those things that we normally, but there is so much to be thankful for. So have a great week and I'll see you right back here soon. Well, like next Sunday.